Hello there, El Presidente Tell here. Not been uh, terribly well the last couple of weeks, but I'm back on, and I thought I'd throw my two cents worth in on the News International phone hacking scandal. Now, Rupert Murdoch is obviously on the ropes about this whole thing. He has taken out full page ads in all his competitors, saying how sorry he is, and how essentially News Corporation as a parent company and News International as its subsidiary dropped the ball and they will be working to improve on this. And we've also had today in the UK in the last three hours, so about 12 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, uh, Rebecca Brooks, the former chief executive of News International, was arrested in charges of corruption of the police and invasion of privacy by intercepting communications, the phone hacking itself. Now, this isn't just hitting Rupert Murdoch. Our Prime Minister, David Cameron, has been affected as well because several of his aides um, and himself have met with News International bosses. He himself quite often went horse riding with Rebecca Brooks when she was chief executive. And, of course, lest we forget that the editor of the News of the World at the time of this scandal, Andy Coulson, was initially his communications director. The very man who runs the spin for the government was the editor in charge of the News of the World at the time. Now, let's not be too naive about this. This has probably happened in every tabloid. It's just that News International got caught and they've been doing things that are completely morally reprehensible. Now, the defence that many of the investigative journalists use is the public interest and the fact that politicians who are corrupt are shown up by these methods. Well, I don't think anyone's got a problem with that. If you look at, say, Woodward and Bernstein back in the Watergate scandal, they used FBI leaks through their informant Deep Throat to find out that Nixon may have been involved in the break-in at the DNC. But this is war widows and their families. This is murder victims. This is victims of terror attacks. There's nothing to be gained from that. This is part of this almost tabloid urge to feed us every gory detail on something. And it really shows up just how bad this was that is now affecting the upper echelons of the company. I mean, you've had Les Hinton, who heads the Wall Street Journal, arguably Murdoch's right-hand man for half a century, practically, gone. But I wanted to address also what a lot of the people who I know on the left have been saying. They're all going, yes, it's the end of Murdoch, it's the end of his stranglehold. Don't kid yourselves for a minute. Rupert Murdoch is the ultimate pragmatist. He would cut his own arm off if he thought it would save the rest of the body. And to be honest, I can see the fact that his political influence has diminished greatly. He'll probably sell his newspapers. I would be surprised if he either kept them and didn't change them or kept them at all. Because they're beginning to become a real focus. They're moving the story away from... um, decent news reporting and putting it into real disrepute the rest of his media empire and I believe he would cut that off to save the rest of it because let's face it this man has got billions coming in he's got billions from films billions from cable billions from his news channels the newspapers make up a small part of that profit he's going to want to protect himself because um, as has been shown in uh, the news recently I believe that there was a copy of the I had this story on Friday that News Corp shareholders are looking to oust the Murdoch family because they feel that it's a nepotistic empire and that the last three transactions Rupert Murdoch's made, most prominently purchasing MySpace, have all been business losses. He's done very badly on all of them. I mean, MySpace, he bought about 200 million was it and he sold it for 50 anyone could tell you that that was bad business but don't for a second think he's gone don't for a second think he's going to be the end of his media empire no this would probably be the end of his political influence which can only be a good thing because i've seen the politicians be more open in the last week than they have been the whole time because in this country in england 
you had to kowtow to Rupert Murdoch and the Sun. You had to do that to get anywhere. If you got the Sun, you got the votes. That was it. Well, I think now we're seeing possibly a new step forward where politicians may not be so worried about kowtowing to Murdoch. I mean, certainly they'll be wooing the press to get supporters. But if we can stop one man having that much control of the media again, especially the newspapers in this country, then that's probably a good thing. But don't think he's done because he's a survivor and he will continue to dominate the media. I mean, he won't be able to buy B Sky B right now. That's on the back burner. He'll do it again in another six months, maybe a year. But um, basically, yeah, don't write him off yet. He's going to come back with a vengeance, probably through um, American networks. Unless, of course, this FBI investigation comes through. Then, who knows? We may see the fall of the greatest media mogul this side of Robert Maxwell. Anyways, um, I'll keep updates on this as it goes along. This is El Presidente Tell, wishing you all love, peace and liberty.